Hey everybody, hope everyone had a good uh, break. So, I'll dive right in. Um, I initially, in response to like Labrie's, is it Labrie? I don't even know, see. Labrie's? <laughs> Labrie's work. Um, I got initially had trouble responding to it because I think I'm just such a positive person and when you're reading about like the fact like, you know, America has designed this uh, school system that is just, you know, inherently designed to fail. Um, I was like, no, it's not. Like, I've been in the schools. Like, you know, um, we can get things done there. But, and it's also, so, and also like, pushed up against a lot of his ideas because, you know, he talks about this idea of um, it becoming more about, like, instead of students being, like, it like it being about like consuming and like it being a consumer driven um market now and just some of the ideas and it also didn't help that he's providing a lot of like history of schooling and I'm just like Ugh, history um so yeah so as I was reading like I just felt myself pushing up against that and it was a lot too because a lot of times when I read about like people's thoughts on education and try to understand it my initial reaction is to think about the way that I was educated at my high school. And I just did not see a lot of these like um, systems in place when I was in high school. But I think it was also because like I was that kid that kind of flew under the radar and I was just, you know, I was an AB student. Um, so like when I got to this part about um, it said, uh, he says, uh, in these terms, then, the crucial question for parenting in the 20th century became, how many years of school do my children have compared to yours? And I was like, do people say that? <laughs> Just because, like, I never, again, like, you know, I had no OP classes by the time I graduated high school. I had one honors class. And so, for me, it was it was just about, like, learning like, some of those skills necessary to, like, go into the workforce, and it was, you know, was learning some of those, like, lessons, too, that it was talking about, um, about being, like, a good, like, member of society and things, um, and so, like, it was difficult for me at first to, like, understand where he was coming from, um, and then I got to this part that said, um, that reminded me of what, uh, I had talked about in one of my previous posts, Talks that the quote says the system placed a uh, priority on the experience of schooling over the experience of learning. Uh, gaining access to school was the key for individual consumers, and educational success became measured in time served rather than subjects mastered. And it reminded me of um, authority is rational. And I picked, uh, I mean, I know like it's kind of like an obscure point that I picked out of that book, but it talked about um, like this grading scale and how. Lots of teachers feel like frauds when they're trying to grade because, yeah, so in that essay, uh, that paper that I wrote, I talked a lot about, um, like, progress grading over, um, you know, some of the ways that we grade now. And, um, yeah, so just kind of the main point that I came back to is, like, this system that we've designed um, that is kind of in place now that feels like you can't really grade like on progress anymore like you have to actually give like a definitive grade so I started to understand more and then it hit me even harder um because like it talked I went back to this thing of like how many years of school do my children have compared with yours because again I was looking at like my parents because <laughs> it talked about the parenting in the 20th century like my parents like never asked that question because I we weren't like comparing each other um, but then, like, again, I had to take myself out of my own schooling and remember what I have seen myself during my student teaching. And I was drawn back to this question that one of my students asked me while I was student teaching. And they asked me, how many AP classes did I have when I got accepted into UGA? And at the time, I kind of laughed it off because, again, I... Um, I was thinking about how different my schooling was compared to even some of the people in like the English education program because I had none again I had no AP classes for getting into UGA um really I think the thing that helped me the mo and that you know I went into this more with the students that I was just a transfer student I had already had my associate's degree 
Um, and I think that helped. But yeah, so one thing that I didn't consider about that was the fact that they're ha- the students now are having this conversation of, you know, how much schooling do I need compared to everyone else to be able to get into these elite colleges that they want to get into? Because that, in that same conversation that I had with that student, I said, I was like, you know, it's totally fine for you to go to Athens Tech and get some credits and then transfer. And they, she just like turned her nose up at that. Um, and, but that's a different conversation. But yeah, like, I guess, I, I mean, I saw this drive in my students during that time to say, I need to make myself stand out from the people around me. And so those are the kind of like systems and relationships, that I guess, that uh, library <laughs> is discussing in this. Like, yes, yeah, someone has to fail because, you know, if, you know, you're constantly pushing to like, um, I have six AP classes, but I have seven. But I, and so at some point in that, no matter how hard our students are working to get to that point, someone's going to have to fail in a sense of like, they're not going to be able to get into the college they want. They're not going to have all the spaces in an AP class because we're constantly, and you know, it is again, like a, almost like a free market system that if, you know, you're not the business that's succeeding, um, then somebody's going to go out of business. Um, and so I hate that for our students because like I th- the next thing, it's like, I'm not putting down that our students should not want to take all these AB classes and be the best that they can be. But I think at some point we have to have this conversation that says, all right, are you taking all these AB classes so that um, you can actually get into like these good colleges? Or is it the fact that, you know, like you actually enjoy learning, you know, while you're there, you know, take the time, of course, yes, to take your AB classes, get ahead because I even made the comment, like, AP classes are great. If they can replace college credits, at least you're not having to pay the tuition for them. Um, but, like, having those conversations say, like, enjoy the learning while you're there. Because I think that's where we sometimes muddle things. And, like, we almost encourage this competition between uh, our students is because, again, like, we're more concerned with the quantity of education that our students instead of like the quality um of information that they're learning and they're actually taking with them because you're taking all these ap classes and you're getting stressed out um and you don't take anything with you because you're just like kind of get like that banking system of education then what's what's the point you know um i think we're again i, I don't know if we'll ever break this system that um library is is talking about um because uh, there's just so much that would need to go into place and again is it does it stem from like reformers like trying to like nitpick at every little problem they come across or is it a mass movement of like teachers and educators having these conversations with students to help them also understand that you know if they keep I don't know. It's such a such a big issue that I don't know where where it begins, and I and I think, and I get that's why that library is saying that. Like I'm not writing this book to, um, to fix anything. I'm just pointing at things and saying this is where we're at, um, which is, which is great. But you know, it, it makes it frustrating for teachers because I think a lot of us are fixers. And we, you know, if we see a problem like reading this book, I, I'm a fixer. I want to say, okay, well, you showed me all these problems. What can I do as a teacher to fix it now? And that's a, that's a tough question. <laughs> and I think that's something that, you know, Dr. Burke would concede about, you know, theorizing about education and being a theorist that's a teacher is that, yeah, we can talk about some of these problems, but, you know, what are we supposed to do about them? Maybe that's a question for next week. <laughs>